Good morning. Welcome to Abundant Life Church on this the 10th of December 2023. Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we have to meet together. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that we have health, we have strength. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have blessed us with. And we pray for your blessing upon our gathering this day even, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless us all, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's turn to our scripture reading today, which is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be barren, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thank the Lord for his word. Let us come before him and worship him. Amen. This is Christmas, sir. so let's sing a few uh, Christmas carols. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Yeah. 
Let us uh, continue to worship God with our gifts and offerings to Him. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for Your goodness, Your faithfulness to us, Lord, that You have not abandoned us even when we have turned away from You. Thank You, Lord, that Your mercy is always new every day. And so, God, we give this offering to You and we look to You, Father, for Your provision, Your protection for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This Wednesday, we'll have our prayer meeting at uh, 8.30. Uh, do join us for that. So Christmas Day, we'll have a service at 10.30, uh, followed by our Christmas lunch. Eh? So on the Sunday, we will not have a normal service, but uh, uh, we will gather together to sing carols, okay, on, uh, on the Sunday, the 24th, right? And then the following day, the 25th, uh, we'll have our combined service, uh, Christmas Day. Okay, so please take note of that. <coughs> Okay, today's reading was uh, the announcement uh, by the angel Gabriel to Mary, right? And it's, uh, it's significant, you know, what happened to her because she then became uh, the instrument that uh, bore Jesus. She became the vehicle to bear Jesus uh, for nine months before he was born <clears throat> but if we look at it as a story we see that uh, the angel Gabriel came uh, in the sixth month this sixth month uh, refers to the sixth month uh, of uh, Elizabeth uh, Mary's cousin who was uh, bearing John the Baptist so in her sixth month uh, three months before John the Baptist was born, the angel came to Mary and told her uh, that she would bear Jesus. Right? So, if we look at the story, you know, as, as a story, we see different elements. Huh? That an angel came to Mary in Nazareth. She was in Nazareth. Huh? And she was a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Right? And this is just what you call description. Right? Description, nothing very special at all. It's right? just a description. Oh, Mary of Nazareth, who's engaged to Joseph, and they are both descendants of David. Right? It's uh, what will be announced. Huh? Uh, you know, when a couple is going to get married, that kind of thing, an announcement, right? <clears throat> the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Right? This is unusual because angels did not visit individuals, right? Angels did not visit individuals, right? It was a rarity. But it happened to Mary. She had probably read, you know, about uh, ancestors. Huh? Uh, only the special ones who met an angel of the Lord, you know, uh, like uh, Abraham, right? Jacob, Isaac. These had an encounter, a personal encounter with God. But it was not common for anyone else, right? And so in this case, we see. Uh, she was troubled, greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Is this a greeting for good or for bad? You know, right? If something unusual happens, you wonder, is this a good omen or a bad omen? <laughs> you know, because angels never appear to ordinary people. Uh, unless for some special reason. So she was wondering, is this for good or for bad? Right? Is this uh, uh, announcement, you know, good news or bad news? Right? So she was greatly troubled. But the angel said to her, right? The angel explained to her, right? Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child, give birth to a son, you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Now this 
declaration, announcement by the angel was something that was extraordinary. Huh? It was something never said to anyone else before, nor to anyone else after, only to Mary uh, at this particular time. Mary who is engaged to Joseph and who lives in Nazareth. Right? So no mistaking, you know, the, uh, the angel didn't come to the wrong person. Came to the right person at the right time. Uh, because it was the sixth month of uh, John the Baptist being in his mother's womb. Very precise, very exact. Uh, so we see here that the angel declares, You will be with child. Uh, you have found favour with God. You have found favor. I, you know, God loves you. God wants to bless you. You have found favor. And this is not ordinary. Like I said, angels don't appear to people. And then, so how are people to know that they, <laughs> that they have found favor with God? Right? You know, unless uh, God has blessed them in certain ways. You know, given them uh, an extra harvest, uh, uh, or some other kind of blessing, you know, somebody gives them a, a gift of money or something like that, an inheritance maybe. But in those days, uh, I don't think they had lottery or anything like that. <laughs> uh, and definitely no three digit, four digit or tontin or something like that. So, uh, you know, you couldn't say that uh, you are lucky, you know, in any way. So, uh, she wondered, how can this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin, how can I give birth? How can I be with child and give birth to a son and to call him Jesus? How can I be with child? You know, I've not married. Now this is natural thinking. Huh? I've not married. I've not had, you know, any relations, sexual relations with any man. How can I be with child? You know, how? Huh? I'm still a virgin. How can I be with child? And <clears throat> uh, and give him the name, uh, Jesus. How will he be great? How will he be called the Son of the Most High? So many questions uh, that she could raise. So many points of query. How can this be? How, how, how? Since I'm a virgin, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Right? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. There are some faiths that claim uh, that it's impossible, you know, uh, for God to have a son. It's impossible for God to have a son. Uh, God is almighty, He is in heaven. How can He have a son? That's according to earthly thinking. Uh, earthly thinking requires for a man and a woman to come together to produce a child. So, you know, God came together with Mary. Huh? This is worldly thinking. Thinking in the flesh. Thinking in our limited minds and understanding. So, they will claim, oh, this is, this is altered. Huh? This is uh, changed already. But I would say 99.9% .9 of those who claim that have never read the Bible, right? And these words were spoken by an angel, not spoken by any human being. So if it's the human being saying, oh yeah, okay, they, they, they spoke some error, they were imagining wild things. But this is an angel, a messenger from God, Gabriel. The one who stands at God's right hand, who is always the messenger, 
uh, throughout the, the Bible. So to claim that it's been altered, changed in any way is, how do you say, it's a sacrilege. Uh, you've committed a great sin to say that the words of the angels have been changed. The words of God, the Bible, has been changed in any way. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Right? The power of the Most High will overshadow you. If you look in Genesis 1, you know, verse uh, 2, it says that uh, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Hovered over, overshadowed the waters. And after that, God said, let there be light. And then the rest of creation came along. God can do it. He is the Almighty. He overshadowed the waters and the whole of creation step by step came into being. With man it's impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. He's all powerful. So why can't he overshadow a girl who's never been married and cause her to give birth to a child? Especially when that child is the Son of God. Right? God's power in the Holy Spirit overshadows her. She conceives and bears a child. And He is the Son of God. This is spiritual. Son of God is spiritual. That's why those who do not acknowledge Him do not acknowledge the Son of God, do not receive the Son of God, are condemned already because they have not believed in the word of the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, the, the all-powerful God. He will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called Son of God. Holy One, why? Because He is of God. He is the Son of God. He came from heaven. And only what is holy can be in heaven. So He is the Holy One because He came from heaven. Of the, the only holy place in all of creation. Nowhere else is holy. Only heaven. Nothing on this earth is holy except what comes from heaven. No one is holy except he who came from heaven. So holy is a very special word that most people have no understanding of. Because it's a spiritual word. Holy. You know, as far as worldly, this world is concerned, <clears throat> you know, if you want to be a holy man, you know, wear orange robes, put some ashes on your forehead, you know, don't wear shoes, uh, eat only vegetables, veg you know, become a vegetarian so that you don't kill any animal. But actually plants also are living things. Huh? So if you eat any plant, you're also killing a living thing. You are eating a living thing. Right? You could not live if you ate non-living things. Well, unless you pick up dead animals and, <laughs> and eat them, you know. But life needs life in this world. So if you don't eat any form of life, any form of living thing, you cannot live. Right? You can drink water, but how much water can you drink uh, that will make you live? You have to have some kind of nutrition. And nutrition comes from living things. <coughs> or things that were living at one time. 
So it's not possible to be holy in this world, uh, completely holy. You can cut yourself off from everyone, you know, go and live in a cave. But what is there to guarantee that your thoughts will be pure and holy all the time? Right? So holiness, as far as this world is concerned, it's an impossible thing. You know, you, you have to cut yourself off from everyone and cut yourself off from uh, eating animal uh, and other things. Cut yourself off, cut, 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 you know, do it, do it yourself. It's all self-effort. And what human effort is 100% successful? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Well, uh, I suppose, you know, if you take your own life, then you can be successful. <laughs> right? You can successfully take your own life. Huh? But where's the meaning in that? What useful purpose does it serve? Right? Uh, yeah, there will be some people grieving, some people troubled, disturbed, and in trauma over your taking of your own life. For sure. So no good comes out of that even. So holy is not a word that this world can understand nor achieve. But God can do it. Because heaven is holy. There is no imperfection. So when, in, <clears throat> when the perfect gets involved with us, we can then be perfect. I, I've given the example uh, of uh, uh, washing clothes, especially rinsing clothes, rinsing white clothes. Because many years ago, I had, I had this uh, semi-automatic -auto washer. Uh, and then when it comes to rinsing, you have to turn the, the rinsing on so that the water then uh, flows into the washing compartment and then I, after spinning, you can rinse it, you see. But, I notice <laughs> when I turn it on, the white shirt was filtering the water. And what was being filtered out of the water? Rust, sediment, you know. So after that, I, I uh, fitted a sediment filter uh, to reduce the amount of sediment. But I noticed that, you know, after they repair the pipes, uh, no matter how good a filter you have, there'll be so much dirt, it will overwhelm your filter. It will block up your filter. And uh, as in the case of my sediment filter, it's not, a, not the best type. <laughs> so fine earth uh, gets through. So you know the water get, is, is like a little bit tea colored. Nah. Huh? So in this world, there's no perfection. And in this world, all the, the perfection of this world is imperfect. It's just like the water. Uh, and you can see it when it's a white shirt. You know, if it's a coloured shirt, you, you will not notice it. But with a white shirt that's meant to be completely white, you can see uh, the, the slightest taint, the slightest earth, uh, uh, our brown colour in, in the water. So only the pure water of heaven can cleanse us purely. Uh, the water of this world has always some dust, some earth in it. Right? Uh, only if you, you know, re re reverse osmosis or some other system of filtering, then you can get 99.9%. .9%, right? But no system of filtering or cleansing will dare to declare 100%. Right? Because you can never be sure uh, that it is 100%. The only way to know whether it's 100% is to test it. And there's no system in this world that can test you know, uh, purity of water to 100%. Uh, there could be some impurities, uh, some dissolved impurities that you're not aware of. To make it not 100% pure. Even though there may not be dissolved 
uh, or, or physical sediment, you can never be sure that it is completely 100% pure. But with heaven you can, because nothing unclean, impure can enter heaven. So what comes from heaven is perfect. You know, these bodies that we have will go back to the dust, go back to the earth. But God will give us new bodies from heaven that cannot decay, that cannot die, that cannot wear out. And those bodies can go back to heaven. <laughs> right? What comes from heaven goes back to heaven. Huh? What is from the earth stays on the earth. Right? And that is a spiritual sign. Spiritual. Well, you could say it's also uh, something that people of this world, if they think uh, uh, enough about it, they can understand. Uh, what stays in this world, what is of this world stays in this world. Right? It cannot go to, an, to, to heaven because heaven is perfect. Right? Uh, you could say, you know, it's just like going to another country. You are a citizen, you are a Malaysian citizen. You cannot simply anyhow go to any other country. Right? Uh, you can show up at the passport control. If you, don't, uh, if you don't have a passport, you don't have a visa, you cannot enter. Uh, but now that uh, they've allowed, what is it? Uh, visa free entry uh, to China and India. <coughs> because there's a lot of potential. Uh, for business and for uh, leisure. <coughs> but otherwise, we cannot enter another country. They cannot come into Malaysia anyhow. Special permission. But even then they say, you know, we must monitor them so that they don't overstay. There's a worry, there's a concern. You allow them in, they will overstay. So when the Most High, when the power of the Most High overshadows you, miracles can occur. Even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to bear, be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. See, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. When the power of the Most High, when the power of the Creator overshadows you, nothing is impossible. That's how He created the heavens and the earth. That's how anything and everything was created because He overshadowed it. So if you want a miracle, be overshadowed by God. And we see that in um, Mary's response I am the Lord's servant may it be to me as you have said she fully submitted herself right she said I am the Lord's servant I'm his slave do as to me do to me as you uh, as you have said uh, may it be to me as you have said when she was surrendered it came to pass it came to be it came to happen God chose Mary uh, she, she God had somehow prepared her to be the one who would carry baby Jesus for nine months and then be his mother uh, while he was on this earth so what is impossible with man is possible with God. Father, we thank you that you are the Almighty. You are creator of heaven and earth as, and nothing is impossible to you. And so we want to pray, Father, that you would do impossible things in our lives. 
because you are God Almighty. You have the power, you have the ability. And we particularly pray for our brother Harry in Saddam Hospital, uh, Ward 7B and Bed 14, where he is right now, that you overshadow him. Let your almighty power overshadow him and heal him completely. What is impossible to man is possible with God. And so we pray, Lord, that you will raise him up, Lord, heal him completely, give him strength on his left side, left arm, left leg, fingers and toes, and heal him from all infections in his body, whether in the lungs, in his organs, in any part of his being Lord in his blood vessels anywhere where there is weakness heal him and restore him let your mighty power overshadow him the power of the Most High overshadow him and heal him we pray also that your mighty power will overshadow each and every one of us Lord we pray particularly, Lord, for Israel. We pray for the spiritual Israel, the people who know the Son of God, who believe and trust in Him. May your hand be upon them to protect them and to provide for all their needs. For those who are not spiritual Israel but physical Israel we pray for your salvation to come upon them deliver them we pray for hostages to be found and released for the whole situation to be turned peaceful and men of violence to be removed from the scene completely let peace reign let the Prince of Peace reign and rule we thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us close this service. Father, we thank you that you are the Almighty. You have all power. And we pray and commit our country, Malaysia, to you that your almighty power may overshadow this land, give us peace, give us harmony and unity. And those who do not work for peace and harmony we pray that you will neutralize them you will prevent them from being heard or seen we thank you father bless us in this coming week in jesus name we pray amen, amen. lord bless you